All right, guys, this is Ross. You can tell in front of me here, we have a crap ton of fruits. Uh, these are varieties and, and fruits I picked this morning. It's been about 45 minutes out there and I've organized them into different piles. We have a, a pile here, which is quite large of figs that have fermented, have split, are not edible. You wouldn't want to eat them. They're disgusting. They may even have some SWD in them. It's just a fruit fly. Then I have uh, figs over here in this bowl, which have also probably split, have uh, just not achieved the higher ripeness level. They don't have enough sugar in them for me to really enjoy eating them fresh. And then we have two bowls here, two plates of figs that I would recommend and I will eat fresh. So this is actually a plate here of uh, Verdino del Nord. This is one whole plate of one variety. This is a bowl of a, a mix of different varieties. And then I also have some Campanieri here. And uh, what I wanna do in this video, because we just had a big rain event that came through here, as it happens every single fall, I've, you know, I've really talked about this with you guys in another video and other videos. We just did one where I kind of show you guys some of these fruits. We talked about all the big problems that you might have growing figs here in a humid climate in the Philadelphia area what this all means, some of the tips that you can do. Go back and watch that if you're interested. This video is gonna be really focused on the varieties that made it through this, this whole rain event. Um, because after a rain event like this, this is a perfect time to pay attention, perfect time to observe and say, well, what has succeeded here? What is ripe? What is in what pile and for what reason? You know, uh, the figs that are growing and that are in this pile here, the fermenting fruit pile, I ain't growing those varieties anymore. Most of the figs that are in this pile, either they were picked too early and I was forced to do that because of the fruit fly, because of fermentation, because they had split open. Um, I'm probably not gonna grow a whole lot of these varieties either. It's really these in here. Which are the, what are these varieties? What are the varieties that made it through this big rain event and it basically destroyed the competition. Oh, excuse me, guys. Just kicked the camera. But let me uh, show you guys a close-up of some of these figs here. So we actually have LDA. Here's an LDA that, that did split. However, it's in the ground. And uh, my in-ground trees in general, I think going forward as they dig themselves in more and more, will not split nearly as often as if they were in a pot. If they're in a pot, you need to be able to control that soil moisture 100%. Now, having LDA split here is obviously not a good thing. Here's one right here that also split a little bit, but I did open it up and it's gorgeous on the inside. It tastes amazing. Um, so it's not the end of the world. Even though it did split, I guess, uh, it still held on to its, um, to its flavor. It didn't ferment. Uh, that's a really good sign for that particular variety. As I know, it, it will do really well for you guys. Here's actually some Smith. We have a number of Smith figs that I picked today. All quite tasty. Even when picked a little bit early, they're still quite good. Another decent one is the Daloso. And the Daloso will do pretty decent for you. It is also an interesting fig. Here is a Socorro Black. It has a more of a flatter shape and also the shape varies quite a bit. And uh, that usually is not a good thing. However, um, that fig I would recommend. Uh, what is this here? Some of these I don't remember the names, but I think this is uh, another snow. This is not Smith. Oh, this is a green Michurinska from an in-ground tree. We just did a review on this. Um, actually really impressed with this particular fruit. Here's a Moro de Caneva again from another in-ground tree. Actually, this fig tastes incredible. Um, so 
you know, so far I've just named a number of in-ground trees that these pretty much, even the Campaneri here is from an in-ground tree as well. They don't look that great, these Campaneri. I'm sure they're not as good as other figs, but it did get through this rain event. Um, the Smiths are in pots, so the Smiths are, are good in the pots. Uh, we also have some Rose and Lino here that also is pretty good in a pot. It's showing good rain resistance, it also good drying capabilities as well. We also have a Hativ de Argentile. There was a number of these whoop, that I've been picking even through the rain. It's an incredible piece of fruit. I would consider it in the same class as Smith. Very, very high quality. I have a number of them in this bowl uh, cut open right now. And I think that's mostly it in that bowl there. And then of course, we have an entire bowl here of Verdino del Nord. So these are the varieties at least. There is probably a couple others I'm not thinking of. Oh, there is a um, Italian 258, believe it or not. So Italian 258 is a variety that does split. It is known to be a splitter. In my container, my potted Italian 258 splits all the time um, in any sort of rain. But the fact that it's in the ground, as I showed you guys, Really, with most of these figs, because it's in the ground, it has been showing a lot more resistance to splitting. And I would even consider Italian 258 uh, to be in a similar class as some of these other figs that I hold so highly. So it's kind of interesting what we've been learning after this rain event. I, I really do encourage that you guys do the same thing. Is, Observe your trees, observe the varieties after such a big rain event. What are the ones that are surviving through this? Um, you know, what are the ones that are showing better characteristics that you're actually able to eat that are not splitting? If they do split, are they going to ferment? Um, you know, are they going to mold, et cetera, et cetera? Control that water, guys. It really goes a really long way. Um, check out the other video that we did on the channel um, that we just published recently about some of the tips I have for getting through a humid climate and growing figs in a humid climate. Um, I think that's mostly it here, guys. Even the Violette de Bordeaux, believe it or not, which I would consider a better variety, it got kind of washed out uh, this year. Too much soil moisture. So if you're not willing to control that moisture, you're going to struggle repeatedly year after year um, you're going to have troubles. You got to grow your figs in a drier climate. At the very least, have a drier soil. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Take care. All right.